Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Allah, the Master of the Day of Judgment, and peace and blessings be upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Allah, accept our prayers, fasting, and supplications. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to your program, The Choice. Please join me in welcoming my distinguished guest, Engineer Muhammad Farooq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How's things? Things are great. Good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Dear listeners, today's show is an interesting one and I hope you will, you're going to enjoy it inshallah. And the topic of today is religion versus media. Yes. And before you continue, we just we just wanted to remind you that this is a live show. You can call us and tell us what you think about the topic. At any point of time uh, during the show, and our number is 2460205824602058. 2460-2058. The show is going to be repeated in the evening at 7 p.m. and uploaded on the SoundCloud tomorrow, inshallah. inshallah. So, Muhammad, are you ready? I am. All right. So, to start off, Muhammad, why did we choose this topic? And I don't, I don't see any comparison between religion and media. Oh. Um, can you explain to us a little bit why we chose this topic? Okay, uh, hopefully, inshallah, once this uh, show is over in uh, hour and a half, it, it'll be clear for for everyone to see uh, the reason why we we selected this topic. Yes. Um, we, we have um, touched upon this fact that we have become a nation of uh, people who have replaced education with entertainment. Mm. So when it comes to a serious topic like religion, which not only, not only impacts our life, but our hereafter, mm. uh, we, as in most of us, we still resort to the media for answers. Okay. Uh, be it Muslims or be it people of other faith or be it people of no faith who are just curious and they just want to know about Islam. Yes. And sadly, uh, globally, with the exception of few media outlets, they are just thrashing Islam. Hmm. And this is not by mistake or by chance. This is pre-planned. There's a lot of evidence to support this. And it's happening again and again and again. They have no remorse and they are not even stopping. As a matter of fact, they're getting more vicious when it comes to attacks on Islam. Yes. And we have a very popular term terminology called Islamophobia. Yes. So we'll touch upon that uh, down the line after a while. But that's that's the reason, that's the main reason that we decided to t touch upon this uh, sensitive topic. Okay. Now, uh, Brother Muhammad, um, for those out there who want to understand more, what is a l religion? Okay. Well, if you look at the uh, definition of it, it's the uh, belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. This is the definition given by uh, by the West, mm. uh, not, not by Muslims. Uh, in other words, it's any ideology that's followed by a person or a group of people. Okay, It could be man-made, it could be divine. Okay. Divine as in it might have its origin in the uh, divine revelation. Okay. If you look at it, in a nutshell, any way of life is a religion. Even people who have no faith, they are also following a religion. Hmm. It's called atheism. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Muhammad, uh, in, why do we need uh, to know about a religion? Yeah. In, even even if, although we don't follow any particular religion, mm -hmm. why do we need? Why is it important to know about a religion? Well, see, so you see, uh, religion educates us on two very crucial aspects. Yes. Number one, what should be our relation with our Creator, mm. and number two, what should be our relation with His creation. Mm. Uh, that includes, as an example, human beings, uh, animals, plants, the environment, the world, and so on and so forth. So the, this is extremely important. God Almighty in His infinite mercy, instead of just leaving us in the dark and letting us guess ourselves, He gave us clear guidance and very simple guidance. Uh, in other words, He gave us light so we can walk across this world and you know, uh, hopefully, inshallah, have a place in, in paradise. So sure. it's, it's, it's extreme, extremely important. And if you look at it, even from uh, a person who's not very practicing or who doesn't believe any faith, he can look and he can see that uh, religion provides a moral compass. It differentiates us from animals. Mm. Okay. 
So from that angle, uh, it's safe to say that it is extremely, extremely important. And just like we have education as food for our minds, and we have uh, nutrition and diet for our body, this is the diet or healthcare for our soul, which is the most important of the three components. Yes. So for the people also who are, who don't believe in any religion, mm -hmm. it's important for them to know about any yeah. about religion exactly. because they're going to deal with other people who do who subscribe do, to a particular ideology to or a religion. religion. So yeah. Is it it's very vital for them to mm -hmm. know how to deal with them and you know not to cross the borders exactly. when it comes to the pe from for, for, when it comes to people with other uh, beliefs and uh, this will save them from getting into clash exactly Plus, today mm -hmm. today we see a lot of clashes around the world mm -hmm. and the main reason is that we don't understand one another we don't we don't um, subscribe to the divine law that uh, exactly. almighty allah has given us mm -hmm. and at the same time we don't want to understand the others we yeah. don't want to learn about and and this is one of the reasons we're doing this show because the polarization between people who carry a faith and people who are free from any faith is just growing and there's this huge vacuum and then media jumps in and they can report anything they want mm. and we will believe it because we're not interacting with people of other faiths we're not interacting with people who, who have no faith right yes. so this is one of the reasons that we decided that this topic is is really crucial now muhammad we are living in an era of technology advancement science um, is it still important uh, in to know about uh, religion religion is it is religion important now? yes it's it's more relevant than ever uh, first of all if we look at it there is an increase in tolerance to any kind of uh, religious uh, discussion or knowledge or observance and there's a lot of skepticism if you tell somebody anything based on faith and if you take it a little bit further the, you need to understand the roots like most of the people who are leaving organized religion either they are uh, reverting to Islam which is, uh, you know, given to us as the uh, religion of nature or mm -hmm. fitra, okay? Or they're going towards atheism and they're having just massive amount of faith in science and they say, well, this world is it, nothing will happen afterward, after you die, that's the end, okay? Yeah. And if we look at the history, the thing is the earlier religions, they try to control the masses by controlling the divine scriptures, okay? And the thing was, they were not open to any other kind of ideas, be they rational or irrational. And that created a rebellion in the masses where they just denounce the clergy. Yes. And they say, well, religion has absolutely no place in, in our life. If it's not science, it's nothing. Yes. So if we, if we understand the background a little bit, uh, then we will, we will see uh, you know, the, the current state of affair in the world. Now, where do we get the information for any particular religion? Uh, because information is, is very vital for us to understand an, any religion. Exactly. So where do we get this information? Well, obviously, just like anything else, um, you know, even if you're studying science or, or, or any other academic field, if you're a student of knowledge, you go to the authentic sources. You go to the text. Okay. And then obviously you try to find a role model or a teacher. Uh, in case of Islam, which is the uh, fastest growing way of life or deen uh, on the face of this earth, uh, that is Quran, which is the verbatim word of God Almighty, our creator. And the and final revelation. Final revelation, exactly. And the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is generally called Sunnah. Mm. Okay, so he uh, lived the Quran, so to speak. He showed us uh, how to lead our lives in order to uh, have a win-win situation in this world and in the hereafter as well. I, I would like to ask you a question which is out of the topic. Has it has anyone uh, ever proved that uh, the Quran is not the final revelation? Did you come across anyone that was able to prove this Quran that it's not the final revelation? Not to my knowledge and the Quran presents challenges itself in it that mm -hmm. if you think that this is from someone else then Allah in other words if it's not from the creator but f from the creation mm -hmm. produce anything similar to it yes. even few chapters even one chapter okay even one verse yes. because see we call it verse but actually it's not poetry every single sentence you can say in Quran is called ayah and that means signs 
Yes. So God Almighty has left so many signs around us in the book and outside of the book that it makes us easy to believe in the unseen. And the special thing about Quran is that it's two in one. It's a message and a miracle. It's a linguistic miracle. There are historical miracles. There are scientific, scientific miracles. miracles. Mm -hmm. And one of the miracles that anybody can observe without doing any research if they're lazy like me is you see little children memorize the whole Quran cover to cover. 6,000 verses, 6,000 something verses. Plus verses, yeah. yeah. And some of them are like six years old, seven years old, five years old. And the amazing part is they don't speak the language. Exactly. That's not their, their mother tongue. Hmm. Okay. So that's just one observance that someone, anybody can make this observance. So you can go on social media and you can see, uh, okay, the youngest uh, memorizer of Quran. And a lot of things will pop up and you can see for yourself and then you can decide. So, because, see, God Almighty created us and He knows us better than our parents. Yes. And if you ask anybody to believe in the hereafter, like heaven and hell and eternity, they will immediately say, show me a miracle. And if we look at uh, the historical uh, information or knowledge we have, all the messengers were given miracles. But you had to be there to see those miracles. Otherwise, they wouldn't be practical. Like, exactly. Like, for example, the miracles that uh, Prophet Moses was uh, given. Exactly. Like the staff or the splitting of the sea yes. uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, these miracles are not observable now. Exactly. And we as Muslims believe in them because they're mentioned in Quran. Same mm -hmm. goes for Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, there are tremendous miracles by Jesus which are pro uh, preserved in Quran. As a matter of fact, there is a miracle by Jesus, peace be upon him, which is not in any other scripture except for Quran. Yes. And I'll let the viewers research that. I'm just priming their curiosity to find out what that is. So having said that, Quran, the special thing is, it's going to be the same till the day of judgment. It's been more than 1437 years. The scripture is still protected by God because he promised it. In the scripture itself, he promised, this is my word, don't worry, I'll protect it. Hmm. So, what kind of, if we expect people to revert to Islam, and they are day and night all over the world, what kind of miracle can we give them? That's the Quran. Quran is a miracle. Yes. And, and they, can, they can, the good thing about it, they can test it. Exactly. And they can verify yeah, it. Exactly. And they can, you know. They can take up the challenges they which can are mentioned. They can take up the challenge. Mm -hmm. And I, we know a lot of people out there uh, who are people from uh, different faiths mm -hmm. who have tried uh, tremendous times, many times, to prove that the Quran is wrong. Yeah. And this research that they did mm -hmm. um, ended up by them becoming Muslim Exactly. Themselves. Exactly. You see, uh, Hatim, there's one point I would like to prove. If you are humble and you are sincerely looking for guidance, okay, there is no way God will not show you the guidance. But, after he shows you guidance, it's up to you to accept it. The choice is yours. Choice is yours, exactly. Yes. So nobody would have an excuse on the Day of Judgment that, hey, I never knew and or ever, you never showed me. And everyone has an equal opportunity exactly. towards the guidance. Pick up a copy of Quran, just open it from anywhere, start reading. Just look how this book communicates with you. It's from your creator. Download it from the internet. You know, PDFs are available. It, multiple or, or, translations are available. Or even don't read it, just listen to listen it. Listen to it, yeah. Yeah, listen, listen to some of the reciters who are reciting mm -hmm. the words of God mm -hmm. as revealed to the Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. Just listen to it. Exactly. Yeah, and see how trank how you are going to feel the tranquility exactly. and the peace inside yourself. Exactly, exactly. There is yet, we are yet to meet a person who has heard the Quran being recited and he said that this is something that really disturbs me mm -hmm. or doesn't make me feel tranquil. There's a social experiment. Uh, you'll find the videos on, on the internet where they just stop someone on the street and they tell them, can you please listen to this and tell us what you, what you feel? And they make them listen to a small portion of Quran. And what they say is just amazing. Uh, and like I said, it's a miracle on different levels. And generally, I don't quote websites, but here I will. There's a wonderful site called QuranAndScience.com. Hmm. So for those of our uh, listeners who are more on the academic side, I, I welcome them to go and, and, and start their journey and, you know, investigate the book. Interesting. Now, hmm. Muhammad, um, what is part of religion and what is an opinion? Okay, uh, yeah, that's a very good question because that's going to slowly, slowly bring us towards the, uh, the main issue of media. 
you see, first of all, uh, religion is something that should be based on text. And then based on how the person who propagated it, how he lived it, mm. how he gave the proof. Uh, like I said, Quran is the verbatim word of God. Every single word in Arabic is personally selected by God Almighty for the whole humanity. Mm. Quran is not only for Arabs or, or a particular tribe or a, or a nation. This is for, the, for all the children of Adam, provided they are willing to benefit from it and believe in it and live by it. Yes. And if you look at opinions, opinions could be from, from anybody. It could be something you think. It could be something you feel uh, about any issue. It could be uh, an emotional response. It could be an intellectual response. It could be a combination of both. Mm. Okay. Uh, and it can be right or wrong because we're all humans. We're not angels. Even uh, I'm not doubting anybody's intention here, but we are all prone to making mistakes. Yes. Um, now, let us move on to the second part of the uh, equation, which mm -hmm. is media. Mm -hmm. What is media, Muhammad? What? How can we define this media? Well, there, there are different definitions floating out there. The one I liked was collective communication outlets or tools that are used to generate, store and deliver information or data. Okay. Uh, it's very kind of them to use the word tools and not weapons. <laughs> because <laughs> in certain cases, they become weapons of mass deception. Yes. As, as we'll see down the line. So the, the other thing is, uh, I want the listeners to have a, a broad perspective towards media. Generally, when we talk about media, we just think of uh, a print media. But it's actually above and beyond that. You have the movie production houses. And media can be broadly classified into, as an example, four things. Uh, print, audio, what we're doing right now, uh, video, and internet. Okay, that includes blogs, websites, and now the social media. There are more than 100 types of social media out there. Okay, so, and, and each one of them has its pro, pros and cons. And as an example, if you, re you read something, you'll remember perhaps 10%. Mm. If you listen to something, probably 20%. If you watch the video, and obviously video has the sound, so that's 30 and 20, that's 50%. And that's why we like to watch short videos on the internet and even on our mobile phones. Okay, so the media has evolved a lot and internet has played a crucial role in this whole uh, uh, revolution, if you want to call it. Now, uh, Muhammad, what is the, re the relationship between uh, media and Islam? Is it a friendly relationship or is it uh, well, a hostile uh, relationship? Uh, I, I wish that was the case, then we would not be having this show. <laughs> <laughs> See, overall, uh, media involves a generation of content and its delivery, and it has a massive footprint, almost a global footprint. Yes. Especially when we talk about uh, cable TV, uh, FTA, which is free to air, and we talk about satellite channels. Uh, I think there is no place on the earth where a video stream is not reaching, uh, not to my knowledge. And the other thing is media is the cheapest means of mass education or programming, if you want to call it. Yeah. So if you do the math, the amount that you spend, even on a satellite channel, which we are uh, told and we know is extremely expensive. Yes. But if you multiply it by the number of ears and eyes that you're reaching, it's almost negligible. Yes. All right. And that's why you see uh, some of the rich people, they're just opening their own channels because they want to self-brand themselves. Okay, they want to whitewash their, their, their evil deeds or sins or whatever you <laughs> want to call it, yeah. So the thing is, what was supposed to be a tool has, for, by most part, become a weapon, all right? A weapon for molding your opinion, for brainwashing, and they get you young. Yes. They get you when you're, you're, uh, you're a toddler, so to speak, and then, you know, they, they build upon this thing. So if you look at it in, in any society, in addition to judiciary, executive and legislation, the fourth column of society is media. Mm. This is how important it is. You know, if you want to summarize it, uh, it's impacting our lives in so many ways that we even we don't realize the true impact that it's happening, happening on us. Now, Muhammad. Are we only the ones who think that media is a weapon or is there people are, are there people out there 
who think the same way just because that we are being um, oppressed by the media especially in terms of Islam that's why we think uh, this negative way mm-hmm. about uh, the media well you see if you do some research on this topic uh, you will see and again look i'm saying generally not all media is like this so i don't want the viewers to have a one sided view there are media outlets who are absolutely neutral and we'll look at uh, you know why they are or how they are neutral uh, still in yes. this day and age yes. but the majority of the media what we see around us and we have ample examples they just don't have any ethics okay and when it comes to this uh, onslaught for ratings which translates into advertisement they don't care who they are uh, you know character assassinating who they are tarnishing the image of who they are you know bad mouthing so if if we look at it uh, in terms of religion like we mentioned in the beginning you have the man made religions and then you have the divine uh, message hmm. and if we trace the roots to father abraham what we call monotheistic or abrahamic religions okay uh, that's uh, christianity and judaism and islam yes okay they take most of the hits so a lot of our listeners would be surprised to hear because generally we think islam is the only one that's getting a beating from the media that's not the case uh, even the other abrahamic faiths are not forgiven and i think um, um the ones who would also stand uh, in line with uh, islam is the celebrities because all the scandals that are going out there mm-hmm. about them mm-hmm. is through the media yeah and for sure people love their privacy and uh, they feel that their privacy is being invaded exactly every now and then yeah you got and the they can't do anything about it exactly. so it's an industry by itself exactly it's a shameful state of affairs that you've got all these paparazzis with cameras chasing you day and night and they don't respect uh you know whether you're with with, with your family trying to have a private dinner somewhere or you know where you're with your children uh, like i said it's rating driven it's vicious it's advertisement money driven and sadly they will only cover and recover and recover what sells mm-hmm. okay now it's it's very interesting uh, at the same time what islam says about like the paparazzi exactly uh, there is a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that says islam. man satara musliman satarahu allah yawm al qiyam exactly whoever conceals the secret of a believer then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will conceal his secret on the day of judgment exactly. so all of us are, we're full of shortfalls mm-hmm. we're sh- full of mistakes we're all sinners but yeah. we wouldn't like this to be exposed exactly. because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed this secret between mm-hmm. us and, and and him exactly and uh, so the people these these paparazzi they go out and and uh, conceal the sec- and 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 expose mm-hmm. the secrets of people's shortcomings, lives shortcomings their, their faults, privacy yeah. their shortfalls they and and this is this is tarnishing their reputation which is something really bad mm-hmm. and unethical exactly act. you you see it, it says in islam that uh, you know oh you oh you who believe why do you ask for something that doesn't concern you yes okay and in addition to don't lie and don't backbite and don't slander someone i mean this is a, a lengthy topic on its own yes. uh, which deals with the diseases of the heart and the sins of the tongue okay which which bring us to the to the next point uh, mohammed mm-hmm. is media damaging anything else besides islam oh yeah 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 definitely uh, i you think know, we have uh, while this is their favorite it's not the only one okay i think uh, mohammed we better cover this uh, point mm-hmm. after the break we okay. have a, we have a short break mm-hmm. and then we would uh, cover this point inshallah in the name of allah the most gracious the most merciful All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the universe, the most gracious, the most merciful, owner of the day of judgment. You alone do we worship and you alone we turn to for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not the way of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. In our modern day, values have changed and many of us became confused with the choices 
that life has to offer. Join us in this journey. The choices of life that will lead us to an everlasting happiness and will enable us to remain on the straight path. The choice. 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. This Ramadan, here on the Nation Station. In our modern day, values have changed and many of us became confused with the choices that life has to offer. Join us in this journey. The choices of life that will lead us to an everlasting happiness and will enable us to remain on the straight path. If you have any questions for the show, call us at 246-02058 or text us at 90406. The Choice from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. This Ramadan, here on The Nation Station. Assalamu alaikum, dear listeners. Welcome back to your show, The Choice, with me, Hatem Al Abdesalam, and engineer Muhammad Farooq. And today we are talking about media versus uh, religion versus uh, media. Or media versus or religion. Media Same versus thing. religion. We would like to remind you that this is a live show. You can uh, call us at uh, our number two four six zero two zero the six zero two zero five eight six. Sorry, got it all wrong. Two four six zero two zero five eight. All right. Two four six zero two zero five eight. Okay. I think I'm hungry today. I'm I really think the studio hungry. needs a <laughs> VIP number, a special number, a yeah. gold number. And the show is going to be repeated in the evening at seven p.m. and uploaded on the SoundCloud tomorrow, inshallah. Inshallah. So this is a very interesting uh, point. Uh, very interesting show. Mm-hmm. Mohammed, what's wrong with me today? Wake up! <laughs> you're you're working too much nowadays. <laughs> I think I need a, a proper holiday after Ramadan, inshallah. Okay. okay, we stopped at the point, is media damaging anything else besides Islam? Yeah, uh, and uh, first we get into that, I would like to mention a, a few uh, you know, uh, verses from the Quran. And uh, first one in terms of the religion where it says in uh, chapter 5, verse number 3, uh, this day I have perfected for you my religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as the religion. Now this is what the Creator, uh, God Almighty, is saying. Yes. And we need to look at Islam in a, in a broader sense. Islam uh, means peace through willful submission to the will of God Almighty. Yes. So any man or woman who does that is a Muslim, okay? Or they are subscribing to Islam. As an example, our father, Adam, peace be upon him, uh, Abraham, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him. As a matter of fact, all the mighty messengers, they were Muslims. Yes. Now, this might come as a shock to someone, but I urge them to investigate the definition of Islam and Muslim. So this thing can sink in. Okay. All right. At another place, it says, and this is in uh, ch- chapter Ali Imran, uh, verse 85, if anyone desires a religion other than Islam, uh, never will it be accepted of him, and in the hereafter he will be in the ranks of the losers. Mm. All right. So this is clearly mentioned, and in terms of the, like you mentioned about the sources of uh, uh, of any particular religion, and in this case Islam, uh, it says clearly in the Quran, chapter sixty four, verse number eight, believe in Allah and His Messenger and the light which He has sent down, meaning the Quran, the yes. message of Quran. And at another place in chapter 48, verse 13, it's given to us, whoever does not believe in Allah and his messenger, we have prepared a blaze for the unbelievers. Okay, so this should leave nothing to the imaginations. It's clearly mentioned and it has made very easy. So 
uh, a simple person like us all the way up to a PhD and beyond. They can comprehend the true message or how their relationship should be with the creator. Now, going towards what else uh, media is damaging besides Islam. What is What are their other favorite pastimes? Yes. Uh, I would like to quote something here uh, briefly. It's very powerful. It's not uh, by me. It's by uh, a media expert. Yes. It says the media has changed. We now mm. give broadcast licenses to philosophies instead of people. Yes. People get confused and think there is no difference between news and entertainment. People who project themselves as journalists on television don't know the first thing about journalism. They are just there stirring up a hockey game. Okay. Now, this is somebody, and you can go on the internet and find his name. You can find him. Is somebody who has been very intimate with the, uh, with the media industry, or you can say he is from the media industry. So, by large and far, what we see around us now, if we are paying attention, that most of the media has become the advertisement arm of corporates or special interests or particular regimes or whatever has the money or an agenda uh, or an agenda and the thing is with the with the recent merger and acquisition which are very alarming most of the media is controlled by a few individuals if not families yes okay that makes the situation even more dangerous now coming to your question of uh, what else they are really damaging globally all over the place, what we can see is the status of women. Mm. While they scream and beat drums that Islam denies women rights, look what they are doing to women all over the world. Islam teaches us to respect women as a mother, as a sister, as a daughter, as a wife, mm. right? The way they are degrading women these uh, movie production houses and even the um, pornography pornogra- the, yeah the news outlet it depends on how much they can get away with it and they are getting the what, advertisement yeah exactly yeah. they are getting in the industry what's called bolder I call it shameless and vulgar hmm. and they are just injecting women everywhere and the scenes of violence okay has increased has increased in 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 the movies and it's been accepted by general public so most of the new generation when they grow up watching this trash they consume this garbage this content and it molds their thoughts so whenever they see a woman they look at it as an object which is just singing and dancing and there to please them yes they, they don't feel that they have a mind and they have a soul and they are human and this is a calculated move which is projected globally and and uh, if if people out there think that me and you were talking trash now and we don't make sense you can go and uh, see in these countries what is happening to, exactly. to the women exactly they get pregnant in the age of 13 or 14 mm-hmm. they are neglected by their families they are being abused rape so cases are, are going raped. up incest cases are, are going be- up they are being beaten up yeah yeah. And in addition to domestic violence and violence against, uh, you know, female children, it's 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 really shameful. And the Wh- while we are who are supposedly oppressing women, we we don't have. Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, we, alhamdulillah, we don't have those we don't issues, have those issues uh, that they have, because by large and far, we are trying to follow the guidelines given to us by by God Almighty. I remember um, um, in, in one of the, um, the countries. Uh, in the GCC, they wanted to promote special cabs for women. Mm-hmm. Uh, cabs, uh, they, they, the cab drivers are women. Yeah. And uh, the government uh, said, no, you know, we can't uh, allow our women to work hard, you know, like a cab driver. And this women are supposed to be, you know, pampered and taken yeah, care like of and queen, like yeah, queens. Yeah. yeah, they don't they don't drive trucks. They don't carry uh, garbage on the street. They don't do hard labor building uh, 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 houses and buildings. Yeah. yeah, women are supposed to be taken care of. Yeah, you see, they, they are doing a very precious job, which is sadly ignored. Uh, you know, we might work eight hours a day. They work 24 hours. They're mothers. Yes. Okay, you and I are sitting here having these thoughts and, you know, having the care and feelings to share these thoughts with the masses because our mothers raised us this way. And the other okay. thing, they, 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 they play the drums of uh, equality between men and women. 
and say that uh, Islam has no equality between men and women. No, there is equality. It's just there is no similarity. You know, I mean, a woman can have children. No, now, if I want equality, what should you be forced me to have children? No, Muhammad, I'll, I'll give an example with myself. Yeah. So if I say that, okay, I there should be an equality between men and women. Mm -hmm. So it means if uh, in the house, if anything breaks down, I want my wife to go and do it and repair it. Mm -hmm. If uh, we go to the uh, marketplace and I buy a sack of rice, I want my my wife to carry that sack of rice on her back mm -hmm. and, and, and get it into the kitchen. Because it's equality. Yeah? Yeah. We're both uh, responsible. No, it, it's insane because it's the production of a human mind, uh, a misguided human mind. Uh, because you see, they are called home builders for a reason. Okay, what you and I do, we can probably put a dollar amount on it. Okay, you work so many hours, this is your salary. What they do is so valuable, you can't even put a dollar amount on it. Hmm. So it's very sad and it's a crime to make them feel that they're useless or they're not contributing to the society. They are making the next generation of society. If If we force our women to get into things uh, you know, which we can do, and they, they, it's hard for them to do, then we are depriving the Ummah of the next generation of, of, of proper and human and beings. And it's very sad, uh, Muhammad, that this, is moving, this trend is moving towards us. Yeah. Uh, you hardly see any programs out there, especially for the mothers, yeah. uh, the, these courageous women out mm -hmm. there who have raised people who be have become leaders, ministers, engineers, mm -hmm. doctors, who, who has raised this generation if it wasn't for the mother? Exactly. There is a very nice series out there. It's very hard to find. It was uh, compiled, compiled in states. It's called Super Moms. If, any, if anyone can get their hand on it, it it's, it's a wonderful uh, series. Uh, it talks about how the early generations, that is the, the Sahaba and the Tabain, mm. how they were raised by their mothers and how they were groomed by their mothers. Uh, I learned a lot. And there's another academic institute in UK and the gentleman there, he has done special research about the scholarship of Islamic women. Mm. You know, the first university in the world was set up by an, a Muslim woman. Not, not many people know that. I found out recently. Yeah. In and, Morocco, I think. Uh, it's there somewhere, yeah, either Morocco yeah. or I, I think you're right, yeah. And uh, he said that I was surprised to find out the contribution of Muslim women towards humanity, not only Islam. And he said what I thought would be an average uh, modest work turned out to be like, I don't know, nine plus volumes. And I, there were thousands and thousands of ladies whom... Uh, were known to do this work uh, of knowledge and wisdom and he was saying that I don't know how many out were out there who were shy about this thing who never revealed what they were doing I, um, I, I, I attended uh, a function uh, a few days back it was an iftar function for people of all faiths mm -hmm. and uh, the speaker was uh, a preacher a Muslim and um, the uh, some of the non-Muslims they had the opportunity to ask questions, so they sent their questions, uh, written questions, and one of the questions uh, was, why do Muslim Muslims op oppress women by forcing them to wear the hijab? Mm -hmm. And uh, the brother who was uh, um, giving the lecture and taking the question, he gave a very good answer. He said, I'm not supposed to answer this question, so I'm going to hand over the mic to any of the sisters uh, attending here Wonderful. today to answer on, my, on on our behalf. Because uh -huh. if we are oppressing them, so at least let them say that we are oppressing them. But uh, one of the sisters, uh, mashallah, she took the mic and she said, wonderful thing. She said, I'm not being oppressed by be, by being asked to wear the, the, the scarf. Mm -hmm. This is a command from Almighty God. And I'm more than happy to obey this command from Almighty yeah, God. For reward, yeah. And uh, it's... Uh, it does not hinder me from doing any of the activities. Exactly. Exactly. You see, uh, and again, uh, this brings me back to the same point that uh, we need to think why that gentleman asked that question. Yes. Media. That's right. And if he had felt that this thing was such a serious issue, he could have done his investigation. That's right. You know, a lot of things we, we ask our friends, we ask the scholars, we get on the internet. Okay, we get facts. We ver we try to verify facts. If something is that serious, 
if it's something is casual then you know i'll just ask a question for the sake of a question and if this question was from a woman i would understand more that perhaps she's thinking of reverting to islam and this is one of the things uh, which is of concern to her but a man asking us question he was just repeating what he heard on the media i mean how many time have you heard this question seriously you can't even count yeah, yeah. so right? many times so many times yeah. now uh, i think they do you have anything else to add on the plate no it's it's basically just said that uh, uh, since media uh, has been taken over by uh, special interests and you know people who have money or like you said uh, you know motives or or objectives uh they are all for materialism mm. so anything that will remind you of spiritualism or remind you of god or let you feed your soul or educate you or give you knowledge it has been replaced by replaced by trash mm. so they will just pull out their big guns and they'll just start thrashing you if you are uh, reminding the creation about the creator which by the way is our core job description which is our responsibility that's why uh, god sent us on this earth Yes. So uh, and you know in, in addition to Islam uh, you know uh, some outlets they will do balanced coverage okay but lot of them are just anti religion okay and this has given rise to an industry where people like you and I are just collecting some budget and we are making documentaries to present the correct narrative Oh, and right. we'll talk about it down the line what options are available now one would wonder and this is um an amazing uh, question is that why is media focusing on religion mm-hmm. they have a lot of things out there to talk about mm-hmm. yeah they can trash anything else why are they concerned with this yeah you're right the religion yeah, they can talk about news they can talk about sports uh, you know lifestyle health uh entertainment you know there there's so many other genres that they can they can chase but like i said all those things get you heedless they divert you they divert your attention from the original objective and that is to please god almighty so you can be successful in the hereafter and get a high place in paradise that's right okay so they they will not uh thrash those things but they look at any kind of uh intellect any kind of discipline any kind of religion or thinking as a threat you you've seen uh, so many times uh on tv they'll make fun of parents a lot of sitcoms they make fun of fun of parents even cartoons uh, yeah cartoons and this is very sad like like the simpsons uh, you, uh, Yeah there's there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of others also I I know the Simpsons, I, and South it's very Park in, yeah, exactly it's very interesting the, uh, the the guy who made that uh, the producer or director you need to look at uh, his affiliations and you'll understand why that program was so successful and the way it was and why it ran for so long mm. okay so the thing is you will see programs on TV which mock education Yes. They'll say oh this this guys are nerd and they'll show somebody with thick and, glasses and mock teachers mock teacher no respect for teachers no respect for parents no respect for education no respect for disabled people yes. yes and these are projected in sitcoms as something hip so we look at these programs either we laugh we get entertainment okay or next day in the office we talk about them and we don't even think that how disgusting that is yes. that you're making fun of disabled people and people you're supposed to respect and love in the name of comedy okay because if they present this to us in a serious tone we'll not accept it we'll, to, we'll to, say wait a minute what, what are you doing how can you disrespect your parents so they make it the lighter side yeah and comedy today is all about uh, mocking others and having no morals yes there was a show which ran for a very long time and it showed number of friends living together okay uh, men and women and while they were doing all sorts of thing they were sleeping around and you know they were setting the moral tone for the rest of the world to follow and they showed the guy who was useless failed actor mm-hmm. didn't have a career didn't have a future he was the coolest and the hippest and the guy who was educated and he had a job and he was into studies he was mocked in almost every episode as boring as a nerd as a, so, so look at the messages they are they're shelling out Okay you think we will be immune to these messages you no. think our children will be immune to these messages no, and cartoons no. are worse 
Yes. And uh, inshallah, after this program is uploaded on the Facebook page, I will put some links where research is presented. So the listener will not say, oh yeah, you're just sitting there alone and just thrashing the media and you know, what proof do you have or what research you're citing. So inshallah, we, we will put all, all this stuff over there. So the reason is that anything, any thought, any uh, discipline that will uh, bring you towards education or, a, or a, will make you more of a human, they are against it. Mm. So they just want you to be silly, goofy, consumers of anything new you see. They don't want you to think. They will say, we'll do the thinking for you. And like I mentioned, after all these mergers and acquisition, most of the media houses are under the command of very few brains. Yes. All right. They do the thinking for us. They decide what we're going to think. They decide what we're going to see. They decide what we're going to hear. What will be our entertainment? And this will... What will, will be guide, our morals? Oh, this will guide us uh, towards what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink. Exactly. The and, whole and, lifestyle. And the whole lifestyle. I mean, you know... I we're mean, all like machines. Exactly. Following the same... Zombies. Habit copy paste zombies we don't like to use our brains we don't like to use our labor just give it to me and i'll consume we're consumers we're not producers okay and and this is this is extremely extremely threatening when somebody else is making decisions for you and you don't even know you're okay with it and those decisions are not good for you and not you, for your life and not and for the your thing year is after. if you decide to make your own decisions and think with your the brain that allah has given you mm -hmm. you're an odd yeah, and then they, they'll, start, they'll start mocking you. Yeah, yes. they'll start mocking you. Either they'll uh, try to assassinate your character or they'll start mocking you. So people won't take you seriously. We, we would just like to remind our listeners that they can call us and join us on the show uh, with their uh, comment. Our number is 2460-2058, 2460-2058. And the show will be repeated in the evening at 7 p.m. and uploaded on the SoundCloud at Oman Radio tomorrow, insha'Allah. Now, Muhammad, um, we know that there are different types of media out there. Mm -hmm. And for sure, uh, there are some uh, channels or media channels are dedicated for religion. Yeah. But the, the, in, the, the general mainstream, is it religious or is it just a, a mouthpiece of the sponsors? No, they, like I said, look, media needs the fuel of money to run. Without money, they'll die. Mm. Somebody has to finance that, right? Whether you get it uh, in the right way through advertisement or you get it through special interest, okay? So they will only play the tune of their master. Media is not neutral anymore. Okay, perhaps it started as neutral, as a good, uh, clean communication And it was uh, the medium. only way to get information at exactly. time, the beginning. Exactly, exactly. So, so the thing is now they have become... Uh, a lot of them have become absolutely shameless. They've lost their credibility. Uh, look at some of the whistleblowers who yes. have left uh, mainstream media mm. uh, and watch their videos. And uh, they'll tell you how they were restricted uh, uh, about the editorial content, how they were forced not to say certain things or how they were forced to say. And, you know, in this day and age, you can catch a lot of media online misquoting, misreporting, uh, and then later on, sometimes they retract the story once the damage is already done. Yes. Okay. Or they will put uh, apology in fine print and somewhere you have to dig for it. Yes. And, you know, they feel that, you know, they're all ethical and they've done their job. Sometimes so, <coughs> it's very obvious. Like um, one of the media channels uh, during the Arab Spring, the country was going, uh, it was over overthrown. The, uh, the ruling party was overthrown by military and then if you see their local channel they uh, the news they say that uh, alhamdulillah everything is stable in the country yeah, and and, exactly. so, and the other channels are showing people are being killed and and the the, the ruler has been overthrown mm -hmm. and 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 all that but <laughs> the the mainstream media is just talking about no everything is yeah everything's just fine just go back to go back to work and consume more buy more stuff yet that you don't need to impress people you don't like <laughs> <laughs> now the question that uh, we need to ask ourselves is that people like me and you and others who have conscience out there mm -hmm. and they know what is going on, why do we still continue to listen and believe what is presented in the media? Yeah, that, that's a million dollar question right there. Uh, first of all, I'd like to touch upon a little bit more of what you've said about uh, does media have a religion or not? Mm. Okay, by large and far they don't. However, there are still some voices of decency and sanity even on satellite channels mm. 
And one of the latest examples is the Istakama channel, yes. which has been launched recently. So there are people <clears throat> out there, people of good faith, who care about uh, the rest of the world and who feel the pain of the people who are suffering and they know that they are suffering because of lack of knowledge, yes. lack of education. So there are individual, if you want to call it, pockets of resistance. But by large and far, you know how the situation is. We don't even let our kids near a TV unless we're sitting with them. Yes. Okay. We need to understand one thing clearly. This might sound crude, but I want the listeners, if they don't agree with it now, to go home later on and think about it. Media is fighting with religion, with organized religion, to win the control of our hearts and minds. It's a fact. And they are losing, thank God, but not fast enough. And if you look at the main uh, media outlets, look at their ratings in the last few years. And we'll talk about it, why this happened. It's going down. As a result, they're laying off people. Because why? See, Hatim, nobody likes being lied to. Yes. If you lie to me, I might not tell you on your face you're lying to me, but I know you're lying to me. And a time will come I'll get fed up. Okay. That's right. And that's what they've been doing again and again. And they've been caught again, again and again. This is not something that I think there is tremendous amount of evidence out there which is uh, which is available now coming back to your question why we still believe them you know yes. uh, they which have they have been course. exposed globally different outlets different times the trend is still going on they haven't apologized they haven't changed they're getting more vicious in their attacks okay they're getting more shameless in in what they're doing why do we still follow them why do we still believe them okay see the thing is if you love something if you grew up with something it's very difficult to distance yourself you know there's a saying that it's very difficult to find the faults of your friends and yes. it's very difficult to find something good in your enemy yeah, okay absolutely right so the thing is and and the other thing is we are lazy we don't want to investigate we don't want to do any research we are we are narrow minded if you tell me muhammad look media is doing that say oh, come on man you're just saying it you're overdoing it yeah just be with the program you know what's wrong with you why you're rocking the boat everything is going okay and you know here you are with your conspiracy theories and all that right yeah. so uh, human beings we don't like change we are lazy these are some of the the the, the uh, traits of humans that i'm sharing with you and the same thing comes with media uh, whatever is fed to us we buy it okay they get a buy in from us and they know this you know you will see uh, phd's in psychology is working with these media houses like what's the next way where you where we can create consumers so you see your little child watching a tv and then he sees a little advertisement for a toy he doesn't even know what it is and he said daddy i want it yes so they are generating customers from young, get them young get them while you can before your competitor gets them yeah so this is what it is it's a it's a battle or it's a war for your hearts and minds and the the other thing is a lot of people cannot differentiate between entertainment and education in this case brainwashing okay uh, yet another strong point is a lot of us are like well okay yeah hatim i see you have a point but you know what choice do i have where do i go what do i do okay i mean you mean alternative alternatives are there but you know we're still clinging on to these things and one very powerful factor is you know whenever you travel you don't have to answer ask yourself what channels you see on the airport what newspapers are given to you what do you find in your hotel room the common ones there you go you yeah. answered you answered yourself the, the yeah? common ones yeah mm. do you actually travel somewhere and you the, say the, the ones with they they come in three letters exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay. i i wonder who they are <laughs> Okay, Muhammad. Now we you know we, we 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 spoke about a lot of things, and uh, we gave a lot of information, and we have acted so smart. So, what's the solution? Well, the solution is first of all, look, uh, we need to understand there is a choice out there. Okay. Yeah. We need to get used to it. We need to adapt it, and we need to compare. We need to see who's telling the truth. Uh, it's called alternative media, or you know, uh, finding for the truth on the internet. could be audio could be video could be interviews like you and I are doing this show yes. could be something on uh, social media okay and a lot of time you will see that the news which is broken by uh, credible media outlets on the internet 
Later on, they are carried in bits and pieces by the regular mainstream media. Hmm. So the, the so the choice is try to lessen the consumption, or you know, at some point in time, just end the consumption of mainstream media, and try to look for truth on the internet. There are a lot of people reporting the truth, who have a credibility established over ten years, twenty years, thirty years, and they have no interest. Yeah, to lie. They, you know why they don't make money? Exactly, they don't, they don't depend on money. Some of them are just uh, doing it with very basic tools, yeah. broadcasting on the internet. Others, they will ask for donations yes. openly to anybody that, you know, if you want me to continue producing documentaries or programs like this, kindly support me. Okay. And the other thing we need to see is that with the advent of uh, social media platforms, and I'll cite YouTube over here, an average person can potentially have the same impact as a established media house with a multi-billion dollar budget. That's right. Okay? And you can do it at home. You can do it at home. You can turn one of your rooms into a studio. Because, but the key here is uh, don't lie, don't jump the gun, don't go after ratings. Ratings will come after you. Okay, like it says in Islam that uh, there's a hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, yes, it is enough for a man to be a liar if he hears something, okay, and then he rebroadcasts it without investigating. Yes. Without checking the authenticity. And th basically, this is so dangerous. This is how rumors start. And we all know that media acts as a catalyst in, in creating rumors. And after 10 years, they'll say, oh, yeah, that was a mistake. We shouldn't have done it. Well, the damage is done. Millions died. Like the, Other millions like, suffered. Like the, ma the, the weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass deception. <laughs> That's what started the, the, the whole thing over there. Which But, were not found until today. Exactly. And they will not be found because they never existed. Okay. Okay. If there is an alternative, why are we still biased? Okay. Now we have the social social media. We have reliable media out there, uh, but still we're we're being biased, especially when it comes to religion, mm -hmm. and especially when it comes to the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you see, the thing is, uh, if you look at the landscape, and we we are of that generation, we can relate to legacy media, and now uh, w also what is called mainstream media, and now the social media. There is still a blend going on, but if we look globally, a lot of newspapers have shut down. They cannot support the model anymore, so they are going online with basic free content and premium paid content. Okay, the new generation, the screen generation, they are more tech savvy. Hmm. So I feel there is hope out there. They will still go online looking for truth. For our generation, it's hard to convince somebody to go online and look for the truth. Yes. Okay. So like I said, we all like pre-cooked meal. You, you make pre-chewed meal. Muhammad, you make a sound very old. What? I, I hope you're talking okay. about yourself. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> remove, <laughs> remove the very. <laughs> yeah. So, so the thing is, uh, see, we are old, so this wisdom carries some credibility. If a 14-year-old was sitting here saying this to you, you think how many people will believe him? Yeah. <laughs> the the thing is, we can relate to both landscapes. That's right. All right. And w the good news is, the big powerhouses they are losing their grip. It's not happening fast enough as I would like to see because they are doing tremendous damage. They have done tremendous damage. They have started wars. They have resulted in pain and misery of millions, if not billions, okay, without any accountability, at least in this world. So the time is that we just uh, shut down doors on them. And the way we can do it is by uh, choking their financial supply, uh, revenue that they get through advertisement. And we see uh, every so often if somebody will get really out of line, uh, you know, some mass corporates, they will, uh, you know, retract their sponsorships and uh, right. the channel will start yeah. to lose. But this happens very rare because uh, they're all on the same page. But I don't we need a, We need more alternatives in, in addition to social media. And I'll again bring back to the example of Istakama. We need more healthy Uh, alternatives in world's most popular languages. But I don't understand, Muhammad. if someone who is highly educated, he went to journalism uh, school and his uh, ambition in life is to be the best reporter. And this, When you come uh, to do a report about certain news, you can see and you can feel and you have the conscience inside you that what you're presenting is a total deception. How do you allow yourself as a professional, to continue in that. I know it has to do with the money, but at the same time, as a, as a person, how would you allow this news to go out 
that will destroy the lives of millions of people well see it depends on the inner voice of your conscious and depends on your definition of being a good journalist i was watching a video by a german uh, journalist who's a whistleblower and i was surprised uh, what he said how they were invited to events to international uh, uh, trips how he was given ready made stories just to put his name and publish in different outlets uh, how he was promised any kind of support that he needed with certain agencies in in the world who are promoting certain interest yes so the thing is just like we see uh, corruption in different facets of life they are right. also human beings there are brothers and sisters they go weak money is very powerful and it depends on what's the balance in you in terms of spiritualism and materialism what's more important you will slide and once you slide it's difficult to recover and you will start uh, you know you will keep on promoting those lies and you will keep on getting more and more uh, financial benefits but i think um, i think there is a a, um, a slight hope uh, in the future muhammad yeah. as as you said there are a lot of whistleblowers out there yeah. and people who would like to be independent yeah. in their opinion mm-hmm. and not to be dragged like cattle exactly like the rest of uh, exactly. Uh, the people in the media uh, but um, we should encourage them more we should support them exactly. we should support their pages yeah. and uh, you know follow them because at least you get authenticity exactly. in what they say exactly and then a very good example is uh, like uh, george galloway mm-hmm. uh he's in uh, i think press tv if i'm not mistaken and uh, you'd see the number of followers people listening to him and uh, uh, supporting yeah. him and he's being blunt and uh, very straight and yeah. direct yeah exactly you see there are people who are not afraid to say the truth they stand for justice i won't say they stand for islam they stand for justice that's right okay. and that's the only thing yeah. we ask and and by the way we muslims are also taught the same thing by islam that yes. even if you see injustice done to someone else who's not a you muslim have to say. you have to stand up for his or her right yes and uh, there are people who are doing this in the economic field on media Uh, they are people who have credibility for the last 30 years and they're independent and they have millions of people who follow them and 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 you have emphasized something very important we are not asking people today to stand into uh, directions yeah. you know to be with this gang or this gang mm-hmm. no we're saying that you have to be honest and truthful and be just yeah, exactly. to all parties exactly whether you belong to them or you're against them mm-hmm. just be That's just. what that's what Quran tells us that do justice even if it is against yourself yes. or your parents or your family or whoever it is you have to stand by justice and the thing is like i said the grip is loosening we don't have just the top 3 or top 4 names out there globally in every hotel room and everywhere we have the liberty of going on the internet and look for other uh, labels who uh, you know uh, give authentic news regularly daily who are credible who have established their credibility along the line if once in a while something comes out which is questionable we are all humans we make mistakes okay but they don't have a track record of taking money from someone and just reporting lies and you know uh, thrashing xyz they don't and they, there are these available and uh, inshallah i will share few of these links on our facebook page also some of them are very young rising uh, some of them they stand for all sorts of justice especially the the islamic narrative also Uh, just to remind our listeners who want to follow the links that uh, Muhammad is talking about, our page on Facebook is called Life As It Is. Life As It Is. Okay, Muhammad, what are the consequences of following what is there in the media? Well, you see, uh, if you don't want to be part of people and you want to be part of sheeple, okay, <laughs> then you will you will just blindly follow. Yeah. Okay, and then the result is hate and rage and hostility, anger, corruption, vandalism, conflicts, and you know, so you see hot spots around the world. They have a lot to do with what media has to say or media doesn't say. Okay, I'll give you an example. In terms of Islamophobia, we see a negative portrayal of Muslims in the media. We see media bias. We see double standards in terminologies. We see disproportionate coverage. We see fear mongering, and it's growing. And nobody's apologizing. And most people. they are saying well it's all right all you guys are like this mm. you know even voices of uh, which we thought were voices of sense even they are being uh, distorted because of this onslaught uh, as an example and uh, you can you can research this there's a lot of audio video content available to support this this side of the story mm. uh, a lot of places they'll show an arab pulling out a sword and saying allahu akbar right so an 8 year old or a 10 year old who's watching that cartoon 
whose only understanding exposure is limited to that about Islam, when he'll turn into teens and all that, and he's sent overseas to defend freedom, guess how he's going to defend the freedom? And actually, all the modern movies today, all the terrorists, all the bad guys are Arabs. And it's so sad we still watch them. Yeah. And we pay a lot of money for them. That's uh, the right. fact. And then they, they will label certain words with a negative connotation. There was an article I was reading how they are <clears throat> demonizing Arabic language. Mm. As an example, uh, madrasas are breeding grounds for terrorists. What nonsense. Look at the top 10 uh, fascist regimes or dictators who literally destroyed humanity. They were university graduate. They were not uh, from madrasas. Not one of them was from a madrasa. Mm. And, and and what is madrasa? I mean, it School. comes from dars. Dars means lesson, a place where you learn a lesson. So it can be home, it can be the kitchen. Exactly. It can be I mean, it, this is insanity. Then they will take uh, verses of the Quran out of context. Mm. All right. And there's a lot of examples. Kill uh, them uh, where you find them. Yeah, yeah. Surah Tawa, verse number five. Of course, they'll skip verse number six and they will never talk about verse number one, two and three. But they'll pick up one and, you know, they'll they'll post it all over the Internet and on, on media. And the most popular one is mistranslation of jihad, the holy war. I think yesterday's topic, we covered it uh, good yeah. and uh, I mean, we shined a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, look at the hypocrisy and the irony. Holy war, if you translate, means harb al-muqaddas, right? Yes. Doesn't exist anywhere in Quran. You know, the jihad comes from jihad. Not, not in Struggle. Quran and not in even Arabic literature. Exactly. But yes. it was in their mind. You know why? Because mm. they had done it. You know what I'm talking about? Who Correct. did who did the uh, the thing and the, lately which president of uh, declining superpower mentioned that word and oops it came out of his mouth yeah yeah so you, you know what I'm talking about and then uh, there are things that you know they will say things that don't exist like there are no women rights in Islam Islam is backward it's not uh, fit in for this day and age it's anti science there it's a problem for humanity they are fundamentalist. Um, they are goons, they are not well groomed, okay, uh, it, it doesn't work for this day and age, and so on and so forth. So their satanic brains, they keep on coughing up these new, uh, you know, arguments. And uh, uh, Well, actually, you know, we shouldn't complain a lot because... Uh, They're doing us actually a very good favor because a lot of people who don't know about Islam, they get to know. They get to know about Islam, yeah. and uh, we keep uh, we, we we keep staying on uh, in number one, the fastest growing religion in the world. Exactly, so, uh, exactly. They, they can continue doing that. Well, I mean, uh, they, they they are giving us negative publicity in a way. There's uh, there's good in it, but there's there's uh, there's evil in it, in it as well. And that's why again, I will say I, I really appreciate channels like Istikhama and other efforts which are popping up. I, I wish they had done it earlier. And I'll give you an example of how vicious before, media can before be. Before you continue, Muhammad, people might think that today only we're slandering, uh, you know, Western channels. And, uh, we're not saying that. Today, even in the Islamic world, there's a lot of Islamic channels which are trash. They are promoting immorality. They are promoting immorality. They're they are showing hate. vulgar. Yeah, exactly. The only thing is to degrade other groups. They are biased. They debate. Yeah. So... Today, we're not talking about any particular uh, exactly. Uh, uh, nation. Exactly. We're saying that all media mm-hmm. outlets, yeah. which are not fair mm-hmm. and just and don't speak the truth mm-hmm. with dignity, then they are all in the side of the devil. Exactly. And and you see, the, the good thing is now we've got a lot of media watchdogs. Mm-hmm. There are organizations, they hound these media outlets and every breath they take, every move they make, anything where they're out of line, they expose them. Yeah. They expose them on social media. They expose them on websites. If anybody gives them airtime, they'll come and they'll defend the correct narrative. We, we need uh, more of uh, honest people like We these, do. Uh, we do. Yeah. I mean, we know something is wrong. We got to get up and fix it. Yes. Or support the people who are. And, and look at how much damage media causes. Yes, uh, you know, Islam gets a black eye and then people start studying and a lot of them revert after every false flag event that they do to mm. tarnish uh, Islam. But the downside is, Uh, we've had examples uh, in the West where Sikhs, people of the following of the religion of Sikhism, mm. they look a lot like us. They yes. dress up like us, you know, they've got They have the beards, turban and they have the beard. beard. Yeah, They have been attacked. They have been killed. And it's not their fault. It's the media's fault. They haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, because media has created this frenzy. We need to shut down our TVs. 
and we need to make some effort to find the correct news on the internet and the latest form of islamophobia or it's not latest but few people know about is arab phobia i've not heard this before exactly this by the way it, it's been around for quite some time it's not very it's not very new and it's promoted by one channel I'll not name them but their name is after an animal. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I can say. Uh, and I will post the links on that as well. Okay. So so the thing is that they're creating this fear of 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 Arabs in in every single domain in entertainment in WWF in wrestling. Yeah. Okay, it's there. You can you can research it. And who watches wrestling? People with low IQ, people <laughs> who are don't have much education, not have much money but a lot of time or yes. children. That's right. Okay. uh they have created this in video gaming by the way video gaming is a very powerful platform we still don't comprehend it and we still don't use it the way we can okay reward based initiatives are very powerful and video gaming is is one venue where you can do these things and then there's the movie industry which has been tarnishing uh, arab since the 80s yes and there's a there's a video clip i will share on 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 facebook page where somebody has collected all those scenes where they are just showing uh, muslims as terrorists specifically arabs with their dress and with their mocking the accent and and all yes. that and that is a long history islamophobia is not something that just But started now i was now. about to ask you that is this a new phenomenon or it was no, there no, in no, the no, past no 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 it's 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 been there <clears> but but like i said media has its good side also you and i are sitting on media right now Yeah. We're on air live. Alhamdulillah. I, I hope so. We're on the good side, uh, Muhammad. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, what happened in the past? Give us uh, an example of the past, uh, Muhammad. Well, you you see, uh, like I said, uh, media has mostly been used for propaganda. Yes. By different regimes, and if you go back uh, before World War Two and World War One. Uh, you will Excuse under you will understand how this was used uh, to the point like if you hear the term ministry of propaganda you know don't be surprised mm. uh so so the thing is it's a tool it can be good for it can be used for good to highlight issues like illiteracy uh, uh famine uh Culture. Un- unemployment it can it can provide very good educational programs for for people of all ages it can provide a uh, skills program for adults who are not educated and who can do something meaningful for their life it can provide uh, solutions to the problems of mental and social and spiritual diseases which right. a lot of us are stuck in right now and we don't know where to go and where to get the 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 feedback from they can act as a platform for brainwashing uh, sorry uh, brainstorming they're already doing brainwashing but brainstorming <laughs> where people can call in and give suggestions like they do on our radio and and we take them seriously uh, uh they can be used to inform people about things that matter things which are serious things which are important okay not just usual trivial so and so actress did so and so and and so and so this information is absolutely garbage yes it doesn't add any value to my life okay why are you taking space in the paper and giving me that right so the editorial content if it's sanitized it can really uh, work towards the betterment of humanity a picture is worth a thousand words so the video feeds are so powerful most people don't realize yes. how they're used in marketing uh, look how they use uh, children and pets in advertisement because our hearts just melt oh they depend on us we must take good care of them even if i cannot afford something i must buy it for my child or for my dog <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right look look the kind look how they're manipulating us how they're if i if i can use the word uh, you know doing these mind games but we don't know about these things okay this is never taught to us in school this this powerful weapon nobody teaches us how to use it That's except right. if you become a media major and sadly we muslims have been becoming doctors and engineers for as long as i can see or think or remember Yes. One of my friends here in uh, Muscat he put his son is ma- in mass media. Yeah. Till today uh, he is uh, the child's grandmother is complaining to the why to her he, son. Why did, he why he did you put him in this? What? He will take pictures. What will he do? You know, should have made him a doctor. You should have made him an engineer. So we need to understand and appreciate this thing and we need to take a part. Look, the the it's the landscape is out there. We need to take a part and make a difference. 
um, I just wanted to mention one thing. Mm-hmm. In the past, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. also went th- uh, through the same difficulty Thank of you. media, yeah. where the pagans of uh, Mecca and Quraysh, they propagated this message to all the tribes around Mecca that uh, don't listen to Muhammad. He's a Salah sorcerer, Salah. he's yeah. a magician, he's a poet, he's, he's a, a mad crazy madman, yeah. don't yeah. listen to him. And a lot of tribes listened to him. Mm-hmm. But those who uh, who had conscience, who had intellect, who had a brain and humility, and humility, they went and Accepted they listened. Yeah. They listened to him and they heard that this the, the message that is saying is the message for humanity mm-hmm. and for the goodness of yeah. humanity. Yeah. And then they embrace this this religion of peace and, and harmony. Exactly. Muhammad, uh, I think we're running out of time. Okay. You see, uh, at, the, at the end, what I would like to say to our viewers out there, we've talked about the power of media and we've talked about the power of religion. So uh, even if you're a Muslim or you're not a Muslim interested in Islam, do you want to get all your information from the idiot box or you want to make a effort and get your information do you think it's fair if you just get everything from the internet is it just is it honorable and i leave everybody this with a very powerful quote which was given by a human rights champion an amazing human being an influential thinker and one of the most popular rewards uh, he was an african-american and this quote was given 50 years more than 50 years ago the media is the most powerful entity on earth they have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent and that's power because they control the minds of the masses. I want you all to get on the internet, research and find out who said that and read about that amazing human being. Uh, thank you, dear listeners, for tuning in on 90.4 in your program, uh, The Choice, from me, Hatim Al-Absalam, and engineer Mohamed Farooq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.